They are taken aback when they see this. Meanwhile, a giant sea creature was approaching them. They realize it's a gigantic shark once they get close enough. After walking on the ground, this shark leaps into the air and dives back into the sea. They are astounded at how a shark can walk on the earth as they watch this. Later, we learn about the film story, which began three days ago. We see scientists and medics working on a project in a water-based lab. The leader of the lab, who was in charge of this research, is visible. He informs his investors that he and his colleagues are working on cancer treatment. We'll also begin genetic modification at the same time. As a result, we'll have access to this information on a regular basis. This, according to one of the investors, might be quite destructive. The lab's chief scientist, on the other hand, was sure of his findings. Later, a doctor displays his control machine, which is utilized to keep the shark under control. In this lab, we meet Atain, a little child who knows a lot about sharks. That is why the scientists and doctors at the lab have decided to keep him with them. The chief of the lab instructs this young man to summon the shark. A big shark enters and begins to eat the fish after this boy hangs a dead fish with a rod. Everyone is in a foul mood after viewing this scene. The shark has returned. After some time has passed, the lab's director requests that the project's third phase begin. Meanwhile, a former employee claims, we haven't received any test experiment data. That's why getting started so early could be risky. The head, on the other hand, is unconcerned and orders the third phase to begin. Later, everyone prepares to implant genes into sharks. They send one of their robots into the shark's lab. That undergoes a genetic alteration after visiting there. Although the shark's nature changes, their experiment continues to be successful. This lab's inhabitants get ecstatic. The shark, on the other hand, goes through a lot of modifications. The lab secretary, who was resisting the head. She was in front of the pane of glass. When the shark began to get closer, she detects the shark in the meantime and moves away. When the head of the lab comes, he informs his secretary that he is going to take her youngest daughter. He tells her that she can pick him up anytime she has free time. Following that, we spoke with another doctor over the phone. Later, the emergency alarms start to sound. As the doctor observes this, he summons everyone, who are all concerned. Because the shark's health indicator is starting to deteriorate. The girl who worked with the head watches this and signals the signal to the shark. The shark's heart rate, on the other hand, has completely dropped. They were all certain that the shark was no longer alive. However, a shark strikes their tanker and kills one of the passengers, a doctor. They're all scared by what they're seeing, so they immediately close the tank. No one there, however, understands why this shark was consuming people. That boy, who knows everything there is to know about the shark, also appears. He wants to know what the doctors and scientists did with the shark. Meanwhile, a doctor with spectacles tells him that he doesn't need to know anything. Meanwhile, the lab's glass is being attacked by a shark. They were all persuaded that this shark was incapable of shattering the glass. The shark destroys the glass the following second since it was bulletproof. No one could do anything because everything happened so rapidly. And no one was able to maintain self-control. There was a lot of water in the lab, and everyone had sunk. Their predicament was grave. After a while, they all emerged from the sea. After that, Atain asks that no one shout because shark was luring them. A shark attacks and swallows a girl who slips into the sea by accident. Meanwhile, a shark approaches another doctor, who begins to scream. The boy attempts to obtain the tranquilizer, but the location is locked. As a result of the ruckus, the boy cracks the glass, and the shark appears. In the meantime, the boy manages to get away from the shark. Mounty, another overweight child, came to his aid. Later, this child shoots a shark with a tranquilizer, but his target is not hit. The shark was going to pounce on that overweight boy. This child, on the other hand, fixes the tranquilizer, and the shark passes out. The boy who knows everything there is to know about sharks explains his plan to them. We should leave right now, he says, but they're all afraid. Because the shark was still present, they had to cross the water. 
that had passed out and could resurrect at any time. They do not, however, have any other options. As a result, they'll have to swim to the door. One of the girl's hands begins to bleed in the meantime. When the shark detects her blood, it awakens. The girl kills the shark there, and everyone's condition deteriorates. To save him, the spectacle-wearing doctor places another youngster in front of the shark. The door was locked and would not open when they arrived. They see a ventilation system in their lab and decide to take use of it by going for a walk outside. Finally, they all emerge from the building, convinced that they are no longer in danger. When they see the fractures in the earth, though, they are taken aback. They are aware that an issue still exists. We encounter the lab's secretary, Cyan, whom she recalled from her daughter's time there. We see her daughter, who was being held captive by the lab's head and swinging. The shark flies to the ground when she detects movement behind her. As he watches the shark, the child is terrified. She tries to defend herself by going inside a pipe, but the shark destroys the pipe and hunts her down, intending to eat her. Later, Atain, a young boy, arrives and saves the girl, leaving Cyan to flee. When Atain locates his people, he informs them that they must evacuate. At first, they didn't understand why Atain was saying this. When they see Shark running across the ground, they are taken aback. They quickly begin fleeing, with one of them collapsing on the ground. And the Shark captured him, another friend tries to help him, but the Shark captures him. The boy then hides everyone and keeps sprinting in front of the Shark. He was about to be attacked by a Shark, but he managed to hold on to something. While attacking, the Shark falls into the water. Cyan and Mounty later cast her out and escape the scene. When they're relaxing, Atain asks, how did you do this to the shark? Meanwhile, Cyan claims that shark genes have been created from the crab's genetic material. The shark can now walk on land thanks to a genetic mutation. Meanwhile, when the spectacles doctor notices that another man's body is bleeding, he advises everyone that the shark will attack us because of his blood, so we should leave him to die. Otherwise, our lives will be threatened, nevertheless, no one anticipated this. Meanwhile, the injured man was attacked and eaten by a shark, and they were all running for their life. When they were being pursued by a shark, the doctor, who was wearing glasses, collapsed in front of it. When that girl appears, the terrible man tosses her in front of the shark to rescue himself. The doctor, who wore glasses, was seriously injured. As a result, rather than biting the girl, the shark bites him. Because of his blood, the shark devoured him. Later, the shark continued to approach the girl once more, terrifying everyone. Meanwhile, the director of the lab and his troops arrive. They continue to attack the shark with their pistol. The shark begins to move, but they attempt to catch it. However, it proved impossible, and Atain shoots his grenade at the shark in the meanwhile. When he goes to fire the lab's director, he is told that they are not allowed. The scientist, who is also the lab's director, is determined to capture this shark alive at all costs. He asks Atain for assistance, but he flatly refuses. During this time, the leader of the lab shoots a girl from their group. He's also aiming his rifle at Cyan. Even though they had no control over anything, Atain became more ragged as a result of this. As a result, they all board a boat to find the shark in the sea, which Atain must agree to. They realize that the shark has killed a big number of people when they dive into the sea. Cyan tries to track down the shark, but she's well aware that it's heading for the city. We then see the first scene of the movie. A shark has leapt and reached the city. Shark wreaked havoc on the city as soon as he arrived. Everyone was running for their life in a hurry. Then, in front of a tiny girl, a shark appeared. Cyan activates signal waves, causing the shark to get attracted to the signals by leaving the girl, and the shark has begun chasing them. Later, we witness Bounty applying sauces to his boat seat. By hooking the meat hook into the dead fish, he throws it into the water. Cyan discovers a video of the city and requests that the hook be retrieved from the sea. However, the shark had arrived, and the meat hook was lodged in her jaws. The shark starts dragging their boat. Later, Cyan passes out on this boat, and the other passengers drown. Shark descends to the ground by stealing the boat, 
which also causes Atain to collapse. Shark gets into a cave by boarding a boat with Cyan on it. After regaining her consciousness, she awakens in a cave. Later, Cyan takes out her controlling gadget. She couldn't locate any indications of the shark, though. Cyan notices this and sends a signal to the shark. Meanwhile, she is aware that the shark is on her tail. When the people from the lab's top come, they start shooting at the shark. After getting a high voltage electrical shock, the shark passes out. Meanwhile, when the head of the lab approaches the shark and touches her, he smiles. Atain arrives, intending to take Cyan with him. Meanwhile, the lab's director stops them and explains that his goal was to develop a bioweapon. I don't want anyone else to know about this, he claims. He was on the verge of killing them both when the shark awoke. Everyone is horrified, and in the meantime, the shark consumes Lab's head. As they watch this, everyone rushes out to save them. However, sharks murder a large number of their humans. Ice smoke falls and spreads throughout the area during this upheaval. Because there was nothing visible, the shark took advantage of it. Only one man survives as the shark proceeds to devour them all. He was shooting his revolver when the shark appeared behind him and devoured the man. Atain, on the other hand, is hellbent on slaying the shark. He flees after stealing Cyan's controlling gadget. As a result, the shark begins to hunt him down. Cyan then throws her control device to the ground. So the shark could open her jaws, but she had to do so from a great height. That's why Atain couldn't hit him with a grenade. Atain was terrified as the shark was ready to eat Cyan. In the meantime, Mounty enters and throws a dead fish into the air. When the shark eats these sharks, she opens her mouth. Meanwhile, Atain fires the granite in her mouth, killing the shark in the process. Atain is nowhere to be found, according to Cyan and Mounty. They began to cry a lot.